Hello everybody and welcome back to one of my videos. I'm going to show you today, or well tell you, on how to get better at death ball with just these simple little tricks. So these little tricks will help you um, go against higher ranked people than yourself. So I'm the highest in the server. Um, so let's say the X guy could beat me using these tricks if he is good enough. Um, obviously Red could do the same. Any of these people in that leaderboard using these tricks could beat me. Um, especially if they understand their character. So the main thing that I will say is servers. With the servers, different servers, you will get ping. Your ping is what causes your lag. So if you see down at the bottom, down there, if I can get my mouse back, down here, I have got 64, well, 92 MS ping. I am on a US server, which is a downfall for me due to I live in the UK. I am British, so I need a server for the UK or for British players. Unfortunately, in the server selector, there is no, whoops, there is no UK servers. There's only the US, Singapore, France, India, and Germany, and oh, and Australia. But um, these are the only ones you can have. Anybody that lives in countries outside those countries, unfortunately, you will have a little bit of lag, a little bit or loads. I have been in some US servers that I've had 700 ping and the ball is just flying off and then insta killing me when it gets to me because on my screen, you know, it's gone off. Can I use my mouse? No. Okay. It's gone off over here very slowly, but on everyone else's screen, it's gone from this player to me, killed me, back to him, killed me, back to him, hit me, sorry, and then ended up killing me. But that's just because of the lag i don't know why they don't have other servers but they just don't but without further ado i will tell you these little tips and tricks on how to get a bit better at death ball so all you need to do is if you're on a laptop like i am is to grab a console controller or a mouse a separate mouse to your mouse pad this is easier to look about this is easier um it will be easier to use than an actual mouse. So with this, I want you to press the right thumbstick in twice. So you go first person. This first person is the worst view that you can have because your swords are in the way, your aura is in the way. I mean, this aura that you can see around me is just from my swords. I don't actually have an aura on. I don't put them on because they're distracting. So um, I would go to this aura person and harvest your aura, take it off, obviously I don't have one, um, or apply a very subtle one, something like shine or calm, um, but yeah, it's not worth, it's not worth it unless you're selling your swords, then put it on your swords, but if you're playing, it's not worth it. Second. Um, when you, obviously you're in this first person, press the right thumbstick in again and zoom yourself out. You can press it again to zoom yourself in, but I would suggest zooming yourself out and then using your mouse to zoom out further. So pinch together on your mouse pad or on the if you've got a separate mouse connect to your laptop, pinch uh, zoom in out. Sorry, with the little middle part of your mouse. Now. This is the best place to be when you are fighting um, with your camera because you can see left, right, behind you. You've got more of a reaction time. If it is coming from here, you will see it straight away, obviously by this bush, and then have more time to react than if you were zoomed in to about here where these corners are, where you'll have, you know, one second to react before it hits you. Um, so being zoomed out is the best thing. If you want a movement um, tip, it will be to double jump. 
and if you want to get out of a situation always remember your dash double jump and dash you'll fly through the air and you won't get targeted as much you can still get targeted but it's not that easy especially because the dash is quite fast now i would suggest always jumping double jumping around like this this is to make sure people don't just hit the ball at you constantly they can still obviously hit the ball but it's a lot harder for the ball to track you when you're jumping and front flipping and bouncing about versus if you're down here just standing still or going left and right like this it will be a lot easier to track you and if they look at the ground and do it it will send the ball to you faster so another tip would be to juke people out so your left thumbstick makes you look where your camera is facing now if you play like this it is perfectly fine um but what i would say is if i was let's say i was sending the ball at this guy i would look at him send it he knows that i'll send the ball at him because i'm looking at him whether if i was doing this and press the left thumbstick in and turn my camera I can still look towards him without him knowing and send the ball. The ball would then go this way rather than the way that my player is facing. The only downside to a free camera is things like for Koju, for instance, I have Spirit Wall on my Y ability. That is because I'm using the controller, it would be on my Y ability. So my second ability, I should say, um, is Spirit Wall. Now, if I am doing my free camera, let's say I want to send the ball at him and he's going to send it back. I want to put my spirit wall to bounce it straight back and hit him. Um, if I was just looking at him like this and sent out my spirit wall, my spirit wall will be going this way towards where my character is facing. So it's the only downside. Some abilities are wherever your character is facing, not the camera. So when you're using things like Spirit Wall, I would suggest going into this mode where you look wherever your camera is looking um, to do your Spirit Wall and go then straight back to this and do your other abilities. Another thing I would suggest other than jumping and zooming out is not always bull chasing. A lot of people experienced in this game will bull chase. They, like, if this guy had the ball, they'll just follow this guy, um, constantly bouncing the ball back at him, constantly challenging for a clash. That is a very toxic way of playing. You can't, you can do that, but it really depends on your play style. I prefer to not constantly ball chase. I will ball chase um, sometimes if I want a specific player out, like a Jiro. I don't like Jiro. Um, and I would I prefer them out of my game um, so I will kill them first so I will send the ball at them um, other things that I might do um, is knowing my surroundings so on things like this isn't a good map like mystery chamber with the cards use the cards to your advantage so if I was to fight with someone, let's say this angel here, if I was to fight with them, I would, yeah, if I was to fight with them, I would be sending it, sending it, sending it, sending it, and then a card would drop down to my left. I'd send it at the card and send it at him. So it would bounce off the card, so he gets into a rhythm of always fighting me, always fighting back, and it just work so play people learn from rhythms so if it see these two balls douche 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 so it'll get faster and faster but overall it's a tempo a slow tempo so if you miss the ball and it hits you you can quickly kill them with ease because they've already parried for the original tempo but now it's changed because it hit you other things are wherever you're look, looking is where you're sending the ball so if you look up and at someone you can send the ball up and over their shoulder you can send it left so for instance if I look up 
I sent it up at this person and managed to kill them. However, this person I'm going to send left. Oh, okay. It, it goes to the closest person, but you can go left, you can go right, you can go up, you can go down. Um, and that is things that you can do that will help you kill people, and especially if you're like that person over there with the gold sword here, that's backed up against a wall. Send it at the wall whilst you're sending it at them, and it will bounce off the wall and hit them. They're also lagging very badly, bless them. Another thing is knowing your abilities and knowing who you're going up against. So with Koju, Jiro does quite well against Koju, hence why I would kill Jiro straight off the bat, because Jiro's abilities are a lot harder to defend yourself against, especially if it's a um, face-off, because I can't use, as you can see, I can't use my handguns in face-off, so I have to rely on my other abilities, and that being my chain spear and my spirit wolf, or my leap strike. Um, but obviously, it that's just for Koju rather than anybody else. You can also do good against um, Jiro with Koju, but I personally can't for my playstyle. But I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it gave you a little bit more information and tips on how to get a little bit better at this obviously jumping around using your environment especially on maps like this where those blocks go up and down you can use your environment by sending the ball at those blocks um, knowing your character and knowing its weaknesses versus strengths and knowing what character does better against yours and targeting them. When there is a lot of players, it's harder for them to target you back. And very easy for you to get out of a situation whether if you're fa face off with them, it's a lot harder. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped. If you liked, a like would be very much appreciated. And if you want more on Death Ball, subscribe. Thank you. Bye.